everyone, my name is Oishiki. At first I would like to say that please kindly subscribe my channel. So today I am going to read a story from this book, Kabuliwala, written by a very famous writer that is Rabindranath Tagore. So let's begin with our story. Kabuliwala My first five years old daughter, Mini, cannot sit for five minutes without talking. In her life, she has not spent a minute in silence. To see Minnie quiet is unnatural and my own conversations with her are always lively. One morning when I was in the midst of writing the 17th chapter of my new novel, my little Minnie stunk into the room and putting her hand into mine saying, Father! Ramdeal, the doorkeeper, calls a crow a crow. He doesn't know anything, does he? Before I could explain to her the difference of essence, punctuations and languages, she started on another subject. Bhola says there is an elephant in the clouds, blowing water out of his trunk, and this is why it rains. And then, drafting off again. Father, what is mother's relationship with you? Oh, dear Lord, I murmured involtingly to myself, but with a grave face contrived to answer. Go and play with Bola, Minnie. I am busy. The window in my look overlooks the road. Mini had seated herself at my feet near my table and was playing softly, jumping on her knees. I was hard to at work at the 17th chapter of my novel when Pratap Singh, the hero, had just caught Kanchalata, the heroine, in her hands and was about to make an escape with her from the third story window of the castle. All of a sudden, Minnie got up and ran to the window, crying, Kabuliwala, Kabuliwala. Sure enough, in the street outside was a Kabuliwala passing along slowly. He wore loose soiled cloths with a tall turban. This was a bag on his back and he carried boxes of grapes in his hands. I am not sure what my daughter's feelings were at the sight of this man, but she began to call him loudly. Oh, I thought he will come in and my 17th chapter will never be finished. And that exact moment the Kabuliwala turned and looked up at the child. Seeing him turn, she was overcome with terror and fled inside to her mother's protection. She had bind believed that inside the bag which was a big man carried, there was two or three children like herself, and the Kabuliwala, meanwhile, entered out doorway and greeted me with a smiling face. So precarious was the situation of the hero and the heroine in my novel, that my first impulse was to stop writing and buy something since the man had been called. I made some small purchases and had conversations with him about current affairs, the British Raj and the frontier policy. As he was about to leave, he asked, And where is the little girl, sir? Thinking that Minnie must get rid of her false fear, I brought her out. She stood by my chair and looked at the Kabliwala and his bag. He offered her nuts and raisins, but she would not be tempted and clung close to me. This was their first meeting. One morning, a few days later, as I was leaving the house, I was stirred to find Minnie seated on a bench near the door, laughing and talking with Kabuliwala at her feet. My small daughter had never found such a patient listener to her entire life, 
except her father. The corner of her little dress was stuffed with almonds and raisins, gifts from her visitors. Why did you give her those? I asked, taking out an eight and a coin and handing it to him. The man accepted the money and slipped it into his pocket. On my return an hour later, I found that the coin had created trouble. The Kabuliwala had given it to Mini and her mother had pounced on the children after seeing the bright round object in her hand. She was shouting, Where did you get that eight and a coin? The Kabuliwala gave it to me. Mini said cheerfully, The Kabuliwala gave it to you? cried her mother. Oh, Mini! How could you take it from him? I saved Mini from her mother's anger and proceeded to make my own inquiries. I learned that it was not the first time the two had met. The Kabliwala had overcome the children's initial terror by a judicious bribe of nuts and almonds. And they were now great friends. They shared many Quaint jokes which afforded them much amusement, seated in front of them looking down on his gigantic frame. In all his little dignity, Mini would begin, Oh, Kabliwala, Kabliwala, what have you brought in your bag? And he would reply, In the nestle ascent of a mountainer, an elephant? Not much cause for the laughter perhaps, but they more enjoyed the humor. As for me, Mini's conversations with the grown-up man always held something strangely, fancy anything. Then the Kabuliwala would take his turn. Well, little one, where are you going to your father's in-law's house? Most of your Bengali girls have heard about the father-in-law's house, but we bring a little new frangled. He kept these things from our child and Mini must have been bewildered at this question, but she would not show it and was ready. Tact replied, Why are you going there? Ah, he would see. Shaking his fist as an invisible father-in-law, I was thrashed my father-in-law. Hearing this and picturing the poor father-in-law, Minnie would go off into the peals of laughter and her friend would join in. In the presence of Kabliwala, my mind would be transported to his home at the foot of arid mountain peaks with narrow little streams twisting in and out, almost their towering heights. I could picture the string of camels bearing almonds and raisins and the company of turbaned merchants carrying the queer old fearman's company and spears joining downward towards the plains. I could picture but some such point Minnie's mother would intervents imploring me to beware of that man. Minnie's mother is a very timid lady. Whenever she hears a noise in the street or sees people coming towards the house, she always jumps to the conclusion that they are either thimps or dunkards out to cause her some kind of damage. Even after all these years of living in a city, she had not been able to overcome her fears. She was full of doubt about the Kabliwala and used to beg me to keep a watchful eyes on him. So our story ends here. In my next video, I am going to read Kabliwala part 2. If you liked my today's video, then please like and comment my video. And also subscribe my channel to listen to more such stories and follow all my videos regularly. And don't forget to click on the bell icon. Thank you.